All right, so welcome back. And on this one, we will talk about the arpeggiator. And I'm going to try to make this video super short because this thing can do a lot of things. And I don't want to do a 30 minutes video. I don't like the super long videos. And I'm pretty sure you uh, don't like them either. So, okay, so uh, with the arpeggiator, we can use it in pretty much two different ways. We can use it with a single note, just playing a single note. And or we can do it with chords. All right. So, of course, this what we'll do, it will create an arpeggio. That's why it's called arpeggiator. So right here at the top, I get just as a polysynth, just a simple polysynth. And I'm just playing a single note and this will last 16 steps, right? So it's just playing a, a sustained note. So if I turn this off and play it, just get one note, 16 steps, right? OK, so if I enable this, what this will do will recognize this note I'm playing and it will play that note 16 steps. In this case, we have eight, but we're going to talk about this in a second. So now if I, if I play this, we get this percussive sound because for each one is playing uh, one note. Now notice that we I, I get uh, 16 steps right here, but this one will last eight. And then of course goes back to the beginning. Let me go down in volume this one. So with right here at the top, you can control how long the arpeggio will last. You can go 16 and notice that right now, right now is going to last one loop for each loop I get right here. Now, of course, this com it's completely up to you. In this case, I'm just going to select eight steps. So, of course, right now it's cool, but not so great. So right here you get the transpose, the transposition. So on this one, what you, you can do, you can move some notes because right now we are playing a single note is following this note and we are playing it once on each step. So on each step, what you can go, you can modify the semitones and uh, you're going to modify that root note. So if I go two semitones up or maybe three, the next time it plays uh, this note on the step number two, it's not going to be a C. It's going to go three semitones up. It's going to be a different note. So if I go to three, maybe I go to five right here and maybe on seven right here, these notes are going to be a, li a little bit different. So you're going to get an arpeggio. Really cool, right? So, all right. So, of course, since you can go up until you reach 24 semitones, semitones, which is two octaves, you can go down, right? You can go up and you can go down. Right. So, pretty cool. I'm going to go back to plus seven. I like it a little bit more. So, seven, five, three. Sound, sounds nice. Okay. So, you know, it sounds good. Maybe not that good. Now, what you can do, uh, you can turn the transposition, the transpose or whatever you want to call it, uh, on or off. Because maybe you're just playing this on a track and you like this, but maybe you want that, you know, percussive original note. So you can turn it off. And you can easily use this with automation to throughout your whole track. Now, the other thing is that it sounds good, but maybe not that good. The notes are super long. So what you can do for each step right here, you can decide what's the length of that note. And you can do it individually for each step. So if I play this, now the notes are not going to be that long. All right. So of course, sometimes you just want to adjust this in a more global way. So I'm going to go and do them all, make them all default. All right. And now I want to go down on the gate and I'm going to do them all at the same time. All right. Much better, right? much more usable. And of course, you can go in, in absurd values like, yeah, that's going to work. Uh, I like it a little bit more right here, more percussive. Now, then you have the velocity of control. Of course, since we are playing with MIDI, uh, maybe you want to change a little bit of the, what happens with the velocity. And remember that you need to have enabled the velocity for your instruments. Uh, if you have it all the way here, uh, nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to go and make it 50%, whatever. Okay, so then of course, for each step, you can modify what's happen, what's happening, uh, what's going to happen uh, with the velocity of that uh, MIDI note. So if I go and do something like this, notice that the velocity is different. And of course, you get the global uh, control, just like we get with the gate controls. If we want to go down on all of them, you can you can actually do it. But again, maybe this last note is too aggressive. I'm going to go and that is a little bit more silent. 
All right, so pretty simple. All right. So, uh, of course, sometimes since you're playing this clip, and uh, you want to, uh, you're playing it at, uh, at a certain speed, maybe you want to make this a little bit faster. So right here, you get your tempo controls. Right here, I'm gonna go, we are at 116. If I go down, it's gonna go slower, or you can go super fast. Now, right, you're here, you can actually uh, flip this and a dotted note, or you can go to triplets. All right, so of course, if you click on this control, instead of using steps, you're gonna be using, and notice that this gets disabled, of course, you can use it with milliseconds, just like you would use uh, a delay. Just milliseconds. Super slow, super fast. All right. Okay, so then you get this control. This one is the uh, groove control. Now, depends, and I'm not gonna go and, and teach right now what, what, is the, uh, what is the groove control, but if you have uh, right here at the top, enable the groove, this is gonna play in a, it's gonna play like in a shuffle mode because you have it enabled. That is, a, it's a little bit different. But of course the global uh, groove control needs to be enabled for this to work. If this is disabled, it doesn't matter that this one is selected. It's not going to work. All right. So pretty cool. Then of course, what you get is the octave control. That's one it don't really, really cool. I'm going to go and play it again. Right now, of course, we are playing on C2. All right. So this one is going to play on the normal octave, uh, um, C2. Now, if I go and do it two octaves right here, of course, it's going to go one octave up, one up, four octaves up. And you cannot go in negatives. It will always start where you're standing, right? So you can go only up, which is cool. Fine. Right. So now this control is going to be much useful is we if we use it with the other mode we get with the arpeggiator, which is going to be the chord mode. All right, so now I'm going to go to the second polysynth. I get a, another arpeggiator. So the other way we can use this, and notice that I'm going to disable this, is to use it with chords. So I'm going to go right here, and we have uh, we get four clips, and I'm just playing uh, uh, a C chord, C7. So yeah, just four different notes. So what the arpeggio is going to do is going to recognize which notes we are playing, and it will just create an arpeggio uh, based on these notes, and will only be based on these notes. All right. So if I go and play it, we can we instantly uh, get that. And I'm going to go and modify the length. Just a little bit, maybe there. Gonna go and play it. That's it, it's that simple. It's just recognizing the notes and creating the arpeggio for us. So on this panel, let me just pause it. On this panel, you get information of what is gonna really be doing, what, what the arpeggio is gonna, is gonna be. So the first one, it means that it's not gonna do an arpeggio, it's gonna play the actual chord on each step. All right, so, you know, we don't get something super cool, but, you know, it could be useful. And then you get different uh, choices. You get a panel with different options of what you can do. In this case, it's up. And now this one, it's really awesome. Uh, they give you kind of a drawing, uh, which is really useful of what is it, this is going to be doing. So if it says up, it no notice that it starts down and goes up. It means that the node is going to first play this, then this, then this, then this, and then the loop starts over from C again. So again, if we play it, we get that. All right, so pretty simple. Now, of course, if you're not sure what uh, you're hearing, you're listening, you can go and route this maybe to a different track. Notice that this one is listening for what, uh, what what's going on on the polysynth, and you can record it and see what this is actually doing. Notice, go start right here, then go up, and maybe I'm uh, using this one. I made a mistake. Let me just change it. I'm going to go here and say that we want to use the polysynth. And I'm going to change the names. Uh, I'm sorry for this. Uh, it could be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to say it poly2, whatever. Okay. So now this one should be listening for the poly2. So now if I record again and play it, we get it. Notice we get the same thing we get right here. So of course you have a lot of choices. And the fact that you get the icon is that you can go right here and go with the arrows of the keyboard. You can select different and maybe switch 
while you're actually playing. So I'm going to go with the first one. Right. Then I'm going to go to the second one. It's just the opposite. It starts up from the upper note and then it goes down. And then you get different, uh, different modes. Now, some of this, some of these ones, they're just not going to work properly. Because notice on this one, it starts uh, down, it goes up, and then it goes down. But my clip, it's super fast. So it will not uh, wait uh, until we just start going down. So I'm going to go and modify this a little bit. All right, so now it's twice as long. So we're going to get more time to go up and go down again. So if I play it again, we get it. All right, let's try another one. All right, so now, of course, this drawing right here, it's very useful because we can instantly know uh, what it's actually doing. And now, then, of course, you get these ones, which are the most common ones. And then you get these ones, which are, you know, combina combinations of, of different. Uh, for example, uh, let me go down here. And it says that it starts up, then goes down, and then goes to the middle. I'm going to go and do the same example than before. I'm going to go and record it so we can actually see what's going on right here. Right, so it starts up, then goes down, it goes up, then it goes down, and then starts all over again. So yeah, so you get different uh, modes or profiles or whatever you want to call it. And of course you get random, so which is pretty cool. Now another thing you could do with this one, you get with this one, is that you can use the transpose to grab whatever uh, node uh, you're actually doing right here, and you can still use the transpose. So I'm gonna go here and do something, you know, whatever, something weird. All right, pretty cool. All right, so another thing you can do with this one that, uh, for example, with the, uh, the first example with a single note, uh, we can go up in octaves, which is, you know, not that nice because we can easily uh, swap, uh, swap octaves with this one. But with the chords, it's a little bit different. So on each loop, it's going to go and do one octave up. It's going to go in steps. Now for this one, I'm going to go right here and make this one bigger. It's going to last 16, so it's going to be pretty long. So now I'm going to go and play it. All right, and let me just put something a little bit more easy to hear, to listen. All right, let me start over. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to go in octaves. Yeah. So what we what it's doing is it's starting on one position, which is the regular position we are right now in this octave, and then on the next loop it's going to go one octave up, and then on the next loop it's going to go three octaves up. So it's uh, in a moving through the octaves in a more progressive way. That's why we get it. So four octaves is going to be much longer. Now, of course, all of this is just depends on, on what you're going to do. And you can, of course, still adjust the speed. All right. So that's it. You can use it with one note or with, with chords. And, of course, it always depends on the chord you're using. And, of course, this one, when you use different chords, let me just go and paste it right here. This one will react to the chords you're using. So, of course, if you have an arpeggio, it will react to these chords. And if you go right here and play a different note, let me just copy this. I'm going to just swap it. The arpeggio will start over, and but it will use these notes. So it's going to sound a little bit different. Now, remember now, since everything's so fast, the four octaves will not work. All right. So that's that's it. That's what this uh, this will do. So pretty cool. Now, of course, just learning, learning what this does is pretty simple because the controls are pretty easy and uh, simple to understand, pretty easy to use and simple to understand. Now, of course, uh, you're going to spend a lot of time just finding the right chords, finding the right arpeggio, 
Maybe you want to add a little bit of transposition, maybe the speed. That's that's why uh, sometimes uh, how this gets a little bit challenging. Just to, you know, you need to find the uh, the right sound. But that's it. Everything else is just very easy to use. Now, this arpeggiator comes, uh, came with a version of 3.5, which is beta right now. Maybe in the future, this will not be beta anymore. And the previous version of this was not that good. It was, I want to say unusable, but maybe not that good. This one is really, really good. All right, so if you have any questions, uh, you can put it in the comments. And if you have your requests, again, just put it in comments. And all right, I hope you learned something today and catch you on the next one.